Hi guys, it's Dr. No Kid Focus Dentistry. So today I am going to talk about myofunctional therapy and myobrace and how do we approach it in our clinic. Myofunctional therapy is a new type of therapy that we are doing to help address incorrect tongue function. So this is probably a very new concept uh, to you guys and actually it's a very new concept in the United States for us. Um, for a long time as dentists we are taught that a lot of kids who need braces due to this is the way they look but actually now we learn that the root cause of why the, your child needs braces is actually because of incorrect tongue function. Incorrect tongue function could be what we call a reverse swallow, uh, could be a tongue thrust, or if we do consider airway issues as a tongue function because the tongue is not moving up on there. So we want to address it in our clinic with the myofunctional therapy. Uh, our thought process is always address this sooner than later because we can teach your child a lot more and they can retain that uh, information a lot better, better daily integrations, and also on top of that, they will get the correct orthodontic movement. Um, so then therefore that will kind of help them with their growth and development uh, for long term. Why do we need myofunctional therapy? Why is this now an issue? A lot of things that we inadvertently as parents start introducing some really bad habits for uh, our children and not knowing about it. So. During development, um, your child does not know how to correctly swallow until one month after birth. And how they learn the pattern of swallowing or tongue resting is actually through breastfeeding. So if you guys are anything like me, I didn't have a long-term maternity leave. So you definitely then have to use more, introduce more bottle fed and pacify use. So what that does is that it actually teach the tongue to go into an incorrect motion. Instead of correctly resting the tongue onto the roof of the mouth, they now are not doing that. They tend to kind of thrust the tongue forward that caused a lot of problem and you definitely can learn a little bit more about the what reverse swallow is and tongue thrust on the link that we're going to put below um, it's kind of talk to you a little bit more in depth about that we are also looking at any myo dysfunction they will have some airway component and i'm just going to use a model just to kind of show you why that is so this is a model and we're going to look at this as though this is a palate and right on top of here is a sinus and the septum so this is a simplified version, but it's kind of helped teach parents that the palate is actually the base of the airway. And when the tongue is growing, the tongue is growing at the rate where the palate should be. So as your child is correctly always resting the tongue up there, it actually will help expand the palate wide. So therefore expanding the airway in a healthy manner to allow your child to breathe well. What happens when the tongue is not up to the roof of the mouth, and this is with all my own dysfunction, especially mouth breathing, is they not getting that tongue up there, and also in addition with things like pacify use of bottle fed, that palate is now is being bent. So this is what we do in our clinic when we examine your child. We're looking for the how high is the palate. So the reason why we care how high the palate is, because now we know the sinus is getting pinched. Now we see that the septum over time will get deviated. So now this will become a skeletal defect. And if we don't treat it sooner or later, this will become a permanent thing for your child. And now you're looking at much more surgery down the line. So that's why we always see any kind of myo dysfunction as a potential airway issues down the line. And we much rather address it in a more holistic approach where we can do more preventative way to help the child learn how to breathe correctly, swallow correctly. So then therefore they're not stuck with lifetime of problem, lifetime of surgery and medications. We basically, have to reteach your child of something that is super subconscious that they never think about their tongue to bring it to consciousness and then teach them new good habit 
and integrate that into the daily life. And what we tend to find is most kids, uh, even with giving just about four minutes of homework a day, that is a challenge for them. They do have a lot on their plates nowadays between school and after school activity. So we have to compress our homework. But because of the shorter homework, they we need a little bit more to facilitate a much more predictable result. So then therefore we use the Maya Brace. So what the Myo Brace is, this is just this little device right here, and, and your ch chow tongue is gonna go into this tongue crit. And, and the reason why I use the Myo Brace is because it's actually a super simple device and I like anything simple. Your chow tongue is gonna go in here, and right up here there is a little bit of a dot. So this is just using that concept that your, your tongue is a very curious muscle. So, you know, just imagine when you have food stuck in your teeth, your tongue is gonna go seeking for it. So once they feel this little notch, their tongue is actually gonna go up like this. And this is actually the tongue resting position. And this is where we try to get your child to do. And the lips is gonna go around here, okay? So we're gonna have the child wear this an hour a day uh, while being alert. We like to tie it with some kind of reward activity, such as washing eyes had. That hour a day is actually what we use it for is priming the mouth to accept the device because what we're really looking for is for your child to wear the device while they are sleeping. And why do we do this? So while your child is sleeping eight or nine hours a day, they're going to get eight or nine hours of therapy, of relearning the correct tongue posture. But on top of that is actually converting them to make sure they are a nose breather. And why do we want them to breathe through the nose? Uh, we want them to breathe through the nose because the nose is one of those organs that actually can be trained to be better. So the more they breathe through the nose, the nose will get better at breathing. And it's also gonna train the lips to work harder to get the lip muscles to be stronger, to close around that. So when we take the device away, they're gonna be in much better posture. We're also using this as a diagnosing device. So if your child after three months of using this and it cannot, still cannot stay in, this is when we know that you know your child is not breathing through the nose, um, that air is better, the adrenal and tonsils should calm down. If they cannot calm, they cannot calm down, then we would like you to talk to your pediatrician, get the ENT involved. But sometimes maybe your child has been such a long-term mouth breather, so then therefore there's so much scarring tissues on the tonsil, on the adrenal, and it cannot calm down by itself, then we look at surgery if needed but ultimately we would like um, a lot of our children once they wear this they actually successfully after three months can breathe through their nose and then we slowly converting them to a full-time nose breather the core of what we do is actually therapy and our therapy is actually very heavily focused on individualized plan each of the kids will have different myo dysfunction different temperament um, and also flexibility of schedule so we always work with you to try to find an easiest path possible to try to help you to achieve your goal. We will always focus on doing therapy, more intensive therapy, the first three months uh, when we start um, because we know that for the first three months, um, usually you are the most excited about it, your kids are the most excited about it, so then therefore the compliance are a lot better. So we're going to start out actually in the beginning to be uh, more aggressive on the therapy and maybe the therapy more often and then we actually going to back taper off um, on the second phase and the third phase. So how we treat the phases in our office is actually the first phase is focusing on breaking the habit and create stabilization, building the foundation for the second phase. Um, the second phase will have a second device that tend to help them with catch up on their growth. It has a little bit of an expansion component to that. And then on top of that, our therapy is very much focused on daily integration, um, finding different ways to challenge the tongue even more, building up more strength. And the last phase is going to be about retention. Um, what we do is we're gonna try to check in and out, let the child go a little bit longer without our therapy and kind of see how much retention your child has. Basically, we know that therapy success can only count at 
how much your child will, will now integrate into their lives. And we ultimately want this is to be a changing of habit completely on there. Um, and we will do a monitoring them. We do a lot of pictures and kind of monitor them once every three months to kind of see where their progress with pictures are. Um, but we definitely will communicate a lot with you guys. And if you guys have any questions, just let us know.